Hey YouTubers, um, I'm going to chime in on this one. I'm going to break down a few bits and bobs on Jacqueline Glenn's um, uh, video that she did was it yesterday or the day before, something like that. Um, now, this is going to be slow and fucking boring. It's because she kind of waffles on a lot, but there are a few choice things there. And it's, it's not that I'm going to take the piss out of the forward or anything like that. She's sort of like a, a bit of an ally. She's uh, anti-atheist, anti-stupidism, anti-fuckwitism, but... She does bring up a few things that I've made mention before, and I've been accused of victim fucking blaming for, and, and all this. And I've maintained that this these, these instances are typical of a lot of um, abusive and shitty relationships, and I've been called a cunt for doing it, because apparently everyone reckons it doesn't happen. Well, here it is, not only from a female, but from the horse's mouth herself. And I can explain a few bits and bobs as to what she's... um what's actually happening behind the scenes where she can't sort of um, uh, understand it. So here we go. Uh, this video is talking about Toby Turner and the rape accusations that have been made against him. That's all I keep hearing about. Now, Toby Turner, um, I had no idea who this fuckwit was. Um, didn't know the face, didn't know the name, and everyone so far has been calling him Toby or Toby Turner and all this kind of stuff. Well, Finally, thanks to Repsy on fucking um, his video a few hours ago, um, it's Tabuscus. Now, that name rings a bell. I don't exactly remember exactly what he does, but I have heard that name, and I probably have seen some of his videos before. But, you know, like... Um, yeah, when, when YouTubers have got the shits with YouTubers, don't sort of, if they don't use their real name, don't use their fucking real name, use the name that we can, we can figure it, like, you know, figure out who it is, because, like, Toby Turner, who the fuck's this cunt? Some fucking random bloke, well, what are you, what are you outing him for? Oh, he's a YouTuber, okay, well, what's his, what's his, where have I seen him before, do I know him? Because a lot of the times, too, they do talk about these cunts like they were fucking, like, heaps huge, and everybody should know them, PewDiePie style kind of thing, you know, and some of them are just sort of like, you know, like, it was several years between when I heard about Thunderfoot first, and I think of, um, is it Thunderfoot or Negafoot or both? One of the two. Uh, like, I'd, I think I'd actually seen him and spoke to him on, on some 9-11 pages, like, right at the beginning in 2010 when I first started up. Um, and then I heard nothing from them, and then I think I might have just gotten Thunderfoot mixed up with Negafoot or something like that, but... Um, yeah, there was this big thing about Thunderfoot abusing a kid or some fucking crap like that, and, like, I went to look into it, like, what the fuck, you know, um, I think I might know this bloke, and then fucking, you know, the, the, that was when the story, like, what I'm pretty much doing now, the story's just fucking, you know, back in the beginning, there was the big bang, or God sneeze, or some fucking whatever crap, and then, you know, the whole history back from then, and then I find out, no, it was actually something completely bloody different. Thunderfoot's actually, you know, not what these fuckwits are trying to fucking make out. Um, even another feminist has tried fucking getting him arrested, or get him, get him arrested in the Czech Republic, uh, fucking sacked from his job and, and all sorts of shit. Want to Google to silence him and all this kind of stuff because he was right. Um, so, yeah, like, I wish he had a fucking said, like, you know, Tabascus, because then more cunts would have known Everyone texting me, blowing up my phone, asking me if I'm okay. Um, you know, I'm here if you need anything, kind of thing. That's really sweet. Um, and you know what never happens to a bloke in that instance? Exactly that. Like, you know, what the fuck's going on here? What, you know, are you all right? Fucking, is she telling the truth? Or, hang on, who's this revolving around? What the fuck's going on? No, that never happens. Because the fucking Sheilas just bombard the blokes with fucking, you're a cunt, you're a rapist, you know, she said so, that must be right, and all this kind of stuff. But it gets even better. I appreciate the concern, but what gets crazy is, you know, the, the next level of people who are texting me saying, hey, uh, have you been raped, have you been beaten, have you been drugged? Taking her side of the story, um, some of them might have been like, okay, so what happened? Before they do jump off the uh, jump on the bandwagon um, either side, but mainly a lot of people don't, and you'll find that a lot of people like this were like, "Aha! I fucking knew it. He was a cunt, you know, all the time, you know." Um, that's the kind of messages that I've been getting from people that I know personally, and for people online. Uh, every comment that I get on everything is about this. 
uh, if I posted a picture of my cat right now on Instagram, it would be Toby, 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 Toby in the comments. And that's, that's fine. Actually, that would be like, oh, well, like, I wouldn't say shit about fucking Toby. I'd be like, oh, nice little pussy. Can I see yours? <laughs> that's just how it's going to be and until I address it. So that's the point of this video. I would like to just get it out there and then not hear about it anymore as much as possible. Please don't leave it as every comment on all my stuff. I can't take it anymore. I am so overwhelmed and I apologize for the speed at which I talk. I need to slow down. I'm um, distressed. Um, so... Oh, God, where do I start? So April F, uh, girl that I've known for a little while. I don't really know her, know her. I just have been in similar areas, so we kind of run into each other sometimes. Uh, posted this on Tumblr. I'll put a screenshot over my face. The truth is about Tobuscus. Oh, Trigger warning. I missed that bit the first time around. Do beg my pardon. They do say Tobuscus. I don't know what I was doing. Then I might have been fucking trying to roll a cigarette when this come up. But anyway. Lying, abuse, rape, drugs, pretty much everything else. So here we go. Trigger warning post about rape on Tumblr. Awesome. This girl is, I think, a nice person. I, I don't really know her, like I said, personally. Uh, I don't think that she's making up everything. I, I think that some parts of the post that, that she said mm -hmm. as definite are more of a gray area, and that's something that I would like to discuss because it's pretty dangerous when we don't explain things fully and put things into context. Um, I have known Toby for a little while now. We started dating in February of last year. Um, now, all right. That's not the bit that I was wanting you to listen to, but now she stated that she was dating him. Listen to what happened running up to and just as she started rooting this fella. Um, when we started dating, I got several girls that would come up to me and, and warn me. They thought that like he was this horrible monster of a person. They didn't want me to date him. They were worried that I was going to get hurt, that I was going to get cheated on or something. Now, this is part of the point that I've been trying to make in other videos. And that's with, like, a lot of domestic violence and all this kind of stuff. And I have made mention, I have been one of these people before. It's a friend of the person, um, uh, uh, yeah, the friend of the person who's involved in this has come up to them and said, right, don't like the look of them, don't like the smell of them. Um, I wouldn't piss on the cunt if he was on fire. Um, from what I've gathered, this, 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 and this, or, like, just of my general perception, um, he's a complete cunt. Um... I wouldn't if I were you. And the stupid bitches, oh, <laughs> I'll just find that out for myself. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's one half of it. Now, coming from my side of the, the, the picture as well, every relationship that I've had has always started off with random fucking Sheilas coming out of the fucking woodwork somewhere telling whoever I was going out with that I'm a cunt, I'm an asshole, I'm a prick and all this. And this was really funny too because... You know, I'd, I'd slept with probably about two or three Sheilas before I'd got before I'd entered into my first fucking engagement, and and fucking <coughs> the Sheilas that come out of the woodwork never knew me. They'd never seen me before. They don't know me from a bar of shit. And any of the other people that I have been with, they don't know them any either. It's like we're, we're fifteen degrees of separation between anyone I knew and anyone that was coming out and talking shit about me. Um, now, normally, that means that the fucking, those slags just want the bloke that the Sheila's with, because for some reason, fucking a wedding ring um, is appealing to single Sheila's for some reason, because they're unobtainable or some crap like that. And if, you know, you do end up getting with a Sheila, and a lot of other Sheila's do get jealous, oh, fucking, she's got a bloke and all this kind of stuff, and, you know... It's happened to me. Random cunts have come out of the woodwork saying shit about fucking somebody. And in my case, it was absolutely untrue. I am very monogamous. I don't go cheating on cunts because, well, fucking, I've got the cow at home. Why do I need to buy the milk? You know? Um, and if I was going to go and fucking sleep with somebody else, I'd give the person I was with the common decency of fucking breaking up with them. You know? But, you know, I have been in positions before where... There was one time, there was, um, back when I was a wheel clamper, uh, I had this young bird bailed up, and she was a real nice sort, too. Like, she was fucking, you really wouldn't say no. 
the um the the thing in that situation was was that um she was she, she was poor she didn't have a boyfriend um she was a single mother and she'd lost all the baby uh, the baby weight too so um apart from the fact she was she, she was a she was a nine and a half i'll tell you that even after the kid and um so we're waiting for the tow truck because she couldn't afford the bill and she's this saying that she'd do literally anything like no kidding anything the only thing she didn't say was look i'll suck your dick to get me car out um but that's the the general impression that i was getting off her was that she was she was willing to, to get blasted in the ass just to save a freaking car and i'm sort of like well unfortunately for you um i'm actually engaged at the moment so yeah that's not going to work um unless you can figure something else out um preferably paying the bloody fine would be nice um this will all go a lot quicker so yeah there's been quite a few occasions where i have been in a relationship and i have had the opportunity to go and do something that i've always turned it down because well well i've got um something already why do i want to hmm? uh. that is going to happen to me and i ignore all of them one of my flaws is that I, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. I don't like to just like judge somebody based off of hearsay or like what, you know, just the rumors. It's pretty much now, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt on this, that she does give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, and that's the reason why she did ignore these random people coming out. Um, in, in this kind of an instance, um, it could possibly well have been a, a should have given him the benefit of the doubt kind of situation. And then when she found out that the cunt was a prick and he was cheating on her, she did the the, the appropriate thing and fucked him straight off. Um, so, yeah, I'm not faulting her for the for her actions. He, she's just bringing up a lot of things that are pertinent to things that I have said. All I ever thought it was just a bunch of rumors. I didn't take much of it seriously. And the reason that I didn't take much of it seriously was because a lot of these girls, whenever they would see him in person at parties, at, at YouTube events would smile and go up to him and hug him and act like they were best freaking friends. And that's exactly where I just mentioned. Um, some of the motivations for some of these Sheilas was that they were jealous that she's got him and they wanted him. So they were trying to fucking put, you know, bad blood in her head, um, trying to break him up. So they might have a crack. They would like his pictures on Facebook and comment and tell him how they missed him and leave hearts and smiley faces. And uh, like, how am I supposed to take your warning seriously whenever you seem to kiss his ass at every given opportunity? It just didn't make sense to me. Now, yeah, all right. Now, that, that's all admirable and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, that, that kind of is part of the reason why I don't mind this, Sheila, because she, she does have a fucking clear level head and all this kind of stuff. And that was quite logical, the way you'd think about something like that. Um sure she's a female and she's going to end up disappointing me but um but yeah you know like fucking i'd, I'd lean towards someone like her than someone like say um britney fucking venti trying to do the stupid cute kind of thing that's how annoying this is like the stupid cute when bimbos fucking play the bimbo out and all this kind of stuff it's not funny it's not cute it's it's really fucking annoying i'd rather have someone with a fucking head on their shoulders April was one of the people that warned me. She uh, she wrote me a message on Facebook because I had made some comment somewhere about a guy hurting me and she thought it was him. So she's like, hey, any chance this guy that you were talking about was Toby? And I had to be like, no, it was this other guy. Um, and she's like, oh, okay, yeah, just warning, be careful with that, or something like that. I don't remember the exact wording, but it was an attempt to warn me about Toby because apparently she had some kind of bad experience. So I said, okay, um, didn't really take it that seriously. Uh, and then several months later, they were hanging out. Like, they were friends. They went to, like, some theme park or something, Disney, I think. That proves my point just a little bit further, that this, this shit, that, that chick that she was just talking about fucking um, was only trying to break them up because she fucking wanted, them, wanted him. Uh, they went to a movie, and I was like, okay, maybe whatever beef they had before has been solved. Uh, I really didn't know the extent of it. So I, I started dating him. And we had a lot of problems. Um, there were situations where I felt pressured to do things that made me uncomfortable. Um, you know, 
and I got to a point where I just didn't put up with it anymore. I, uh, you, you know, like, I, it, this is so hard to, to talk about because I feel like, first of all, this is personal. It should not be on the internet, and I'm, I feel, like, forced almost to do this because of things that are being said and, and how much pressure is being put on me to address it since it's... Yeah, well, I personally find that if if a video seems forced or it doesn't just sort of naturally roll off, because everyone knows that I I mainly do um, single takes in my videos, and um, 90 percent of the time um, those single takes are the first draft. So I'll just turn the camera on and just waffle on, and everyone can see how fairly competent I am at, at just turning the camera on and just talking for a while. Um, and I've, I've been in that position before where I've wanted to talk on a subject or something like that. I just haven't sort of just been in the, the right mood kind of thing. And there are even sometimes where I've just picked a subject for the hell of making a video. Uh, and there are still a couple up there. If you do find them and they're just sort of, they really feel forced and sluggish and, and all this kind of stuff. Well, that's because they they were. Um, I really wasn't in the mood to do so, and this, that, and the other thing. And if it is forced, um, it just doesn't just doesn't come out as well. So the the last ten percent of videos that, that don't go up after I've made them, um, they're they're ridiculously forced. And you know, I, I sort of either kind of realise halfway through it and then stop filming, or I've made the video and then I've gone to to just proof watch it just before I've uploaded it. And, you know, I'd be sitting there, uh, yeah, no, 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 not doing that one. So, yeah, if it is forced, then, yeah, you shouldn't really do it because it, it does end up like a shit video. Now, Jacqueline, she usually makes quite entertaining videos. They keep you enthralled for a good long while and, you know, you, you know she does get out what she, she has to say, um, you know, apic, uh, buddy. See, now, there you go. You got a blooper in the fucking, in the one take, but, yeah. No, she's um, she seems fairly level-headed and all this kind of stuff, and I agree with the large majority of stuff that she does say. Um, and yeah, this is just not one of her videos. This is very sort of drawn out, and it's twenty-one minutes long. But we're not going to go through the whole thing because she makes it. She makes my point well before it. Um, but yeah, it's twenty-one minutes long, and it's just drawn out. And but at least she did the right thing at the beginning, and that's not to waffle on about the whole history of the universe leading up to this fuckwit's birth. <laughs> you know. Very public that him and I like know each other. Um, but like, just because I felt pressured to do things that made me kind of uncomfortable does not mean that I was forced to do them. Bang, and that's that's a perfect fucking description of what's happening now in with a lot of young cunts. Um, you know, like with people saying that they were assaulted or abused or oppressed or bloody molested or something like that because they had to do something they didn't want to do. Like, I don't know, face a punishment that they brought on themselves or made to do a task like a, a group activity but they didn't want to do it so no they were they were offended and their poor little dispositions were hurted and all this kind of stuff this is life boys and girls you are going to be made to do a few things that you don't like to do whether you like it or not if you do not want to do things you do not want to do in your life, then please remove yourself from the fucking gene pool so that useful people can take your fucking place and get the job done. Um, but yeah, like, you know, she could have talked shit about this. She could have made a, a, a big mountain out of a molehill. She could have started spouting bullshit about it and all this kind of stuff, like making allegations about the bloke and all this. But just because she was... She, she might have done something that she felt uncomfortable doing. She admits that, she, well, she agreed to do it in the first place, and that's her own silly fucking fault. I mean, if I didn't want to sit in a little metal box all over in, during the Australian summertime where it's 10 degrees hotter in the cab than what it is outside the cab for 14 hours a fucking day, I definitely wouldn't fucking do it. I didn't want to do it, but they were paying me enough for me to not give a fuck. Um, so, yeah, like, I didn't want to do it, but I wanted the money, so, um, yeah. Um, she, she could have, you know, been a bit of, a bigger fuckwit about this, but, you know, I mean, like, she's probably talking about some fucking weird sex shit that might have 
freaked out pretty much every bloody Sheila, but she went along with it and, you know, okay, yep, okay, that was a bit, mm, I don't really want to do that again, but I'm not going to suck about the first time I said bloody yes. And I feel like that's where a lot of people go wrong in situations. Like, rather than admit that they did something that maybe they feel ashamed about, they will just blame it on some other factor, like the person pushing me to do it. Um, I'm not going to do that. Uh, you know, we had our own personal fights over situations like that and resolved them within the relationship. And that's as far as it should ever go. Um, the reason why we didn't work out was because nothing to do with things like that. But I mean, I guess it's sort of related, but not really. Um, he, he has, uh, a history of cheating. He does not... He's not a person that's probably very good with monogamy, and that was our biggest fight, because that was something that I wanted, uh, and he, he wasn't honest with me about things. Uh, I caught him in lies. I, I didn't trust him anymore. My trust had been broken. Right. Now, monogamy. Now, <clears throat> this shits me even more, that <clears throat> bimbos get told at the beginning of the relationship that the pricks are fuck with. But they go with him because he's a super sexy, funky, bunky, bloody sits on a fucking chair and gives it an orgasm. But in fact, he's only just a one pump wonder and then rolls over, goes to sleep and, you know, <coughs> was that good for you? And it's a fucking sleep before she has a chance to fucking suck about it. But, you know, and then a lot of Sheila's, they do go out with a lot of fuckwits like this because they're too fucking stupid to see the person that. You know, the, the person over there is actually ten times better than the person over here. Okay, he looks like a really creepy fucking big nasty knuckle dragon fucking monster of a person. But this cunt's an asshole. You know, that big ugly nasty fucking knuckle dragon monster over there actually carries a fucking firefighter's badge with him. This fucking asshole wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. Which one would you choose? Most chillers go, this fucking bloke. And what's got two thumbs and is just fucking fed up with women's bullshit? This cunt. <laughs> so, after being fucked over by a bunch of these fucking assholes, Monkey Boy comes along and says, well, you want all of that shit? That's the shit I want too. And then they don't fucking believe me because they've been fucked over by too many dumb cunts. <sighs> You know, I'll bet you 10 bucks if I went up to Jacqueline Glenn right now and fucking said, right, you want monogamy and shit, I'm the most monogamous mo motherfucker on the planet. Fucking brought up with an old Victorian fucking style bloody um, <clears throat> uh, upbringing. Grandfather's, like, so, like the, me, on my mum's side of the family, they were like fucking proper English fucking, you know, fucking um, the bloody uh, upbringing type fucking thing, you know, Victorian era kind of thing, you know. Um, uh... Stepford wife type fucking shit, you know, lady, the bloke goes out, he's the breadwinner, the, the, the woman takes care of the house and the, the kids and by proxy looks after the bloke while he's going out and earning money for the rest of them to survive kind of thing. It might be a bit of a sexist way of looking at it, but that's just the way I feel about the whole situation. Like, I don't mind if the Sheila stays at home and cleans and cooks and all this kind of stuff to support me while I'm out fucking working 14, 15 hours a day earning all the money. I'm putting the roof over her head. She can fucking maintain the damn thing, so I have a place to sleep, pretty or much. Um, but Susan ended up just being a fucking living whore because, well, she did fucking nothing. Um, and I was feeding her and her kids. I was putting the roof over their head, paying for all the bills and shit like that. And the only thing I was really getting out of it was a, di was a wet dick at the end of the day. So, you know, I was paying all this friggin' money just so I, was, I could have a root every night. That was about it. She didn't do fuck all else. Um... Yeah, so, you know, <clears throat> yeah, fucking, that's another part of the problem with fucking society nowadays, is the dumb bitches have got the choice, and they go and make the stupid choice, and then when the fucking smart choice comes around, they're too fucking stupid to realise it, or too fucking, um, uh, bloody, like, you, you're seen as too untrustworthy, you now thanks to other fucking assholes. And that just does seem like a, a bit of a running trend, you know, in the world nowadays, is that dumb cunts will fuck it up for the fucking, for the rest of us, you know? Like, 
I can remember every second or third birthday I used to have back in the late in the um in the eighties. I got fucking fireworks on it because my birthday sometimes falls on the Queen's birthday long weekend. And that used to be called firecracker night, but because too many dumb shits fucking blew off their bloody hands and fucking stuck bungers up dogs' asses and fucking destroyed cunts' letterboxes, they fucking banned that. You know, fucking... I'm a very competent firearms owner. I have a very big interest in firearms and all this. Would love to get back into it, but for some reason now I'm not allowed to fucking even have a fucking toy gun. I'm too unbloody trustworthy. Now I'm starting to lose the plot. I'm already fucking psychologically unstable. That just means that I'm never getting a gun license. But it doesn't matter. I've got my plans. When I get back to Africa, I can have automatics and strike and stick its faggot gun laws up its ass. Um, yeah. So fucking... Yeah, just fucking fed up with fucking cunts not trusting me and all this kind of stuff. Just fucking fed up with it. And I'm fed up with the fact that they they only don't trust me because of some other clear fuckwit. He's a he's he was a he's clearly a fuckwit, and just because I'm a bit nasty looking and shit, I'm a little overweight and all this kind of stuff, I'm not the most pleasing looking fucking thing on the planet. But of course, you know I must be just like the rest of them. Mm. And that's where it, it, it shits me that like cunts like her will give fuckwits like him the benefit of the doubt but this cunt will fuck her trust up so fucking bad that when it comes time if in the event that she'd be in the position to give me the benefit of the doubt she doesn't trust me so the the point where they actually find somebody decent for them that actually wants the same things as them and you know this that and the other thing and you know uh would have a better life with them nah they don't choose it because they now don't trust you Yeah, it might be all fun fucking with dumb cunts' heads and shit like that, but fucking, you know, you're only making the place worse. Um, and I got to the point where I decided that I could not be happy like that. I wanted to, to have a monogamous relationship, and that's it. And if you can't give that to me, then I'm sorry. I just, I can't be with you. And, and then we broke up. And then we ended up getting back together, like, a week later. Um, and he told me that he was going to change, and he realized that, like, being with me and, and potential of you know having that relationship and any sheilas that are watching here this little spiel that she's going on with where he's trying to get back at her and all this you'll get back with her and all this that's a load of shit too if you do break up with a bloke and he does come back like this don't fucking believe him especially if the cunt's already cheated on you he's just gonna do it again i mean like that's part of the reason why I'm happy being single is because I only seem to attract Sheila's that aren't very monogamous at all. Um, my first ex, she was well-renowned for cheating. In fact, she had a try-before-she-buy uh, policy at the end of it. She'd go fucking a whole bunch of other blokes at the end of a relationship to try and find somebody that she'd already have by the time she dumps the last bloke, leaves that poor cunt fucking, you know, sitting there fucking twiddling his bloody thumbs like, oh, we'll drop it in his lap right, why don't you? The fucking same thing with me second ex. She was a dirty fucking slut bag too. I should have seen this one coming. She'd had uh, two previous husbands. She'd rooted me before she decided to tell her lesbian friend that it was over. And fucking... Well, that's two years I wish I had back. Anyway. To flourish like that was more important than sex with other people, even though that was pretty important to him. Uh, and we decided to work on it again. And that blew up in my face because he, you know, I caught him texting inappropriate things to other people, um, and I just, I couldn't trust it, I couldn't trust it, so I left him again, and during this period of him, like, trying to convince me that, you know, I just, all I want is you, I, I'm never going to go anywhere else, and like, I promise, and I, I'll, I'll earn your trust back, like, while he was saying all those things, he's, like, out with other people, like, sleeping with other people, and, and lying about it, um, one of these situations, uh, was where he went out of town, he was in Canada, and I went to his place to watch the dogs, and I found some questionable things that he denied, that later he admitted, uh, and also while he was in Canada, there was a girl there, <laughs> while he was denying what I had found was meanwhile with somebody else, you know, and then I just, it was just at a breaking point for me, I couldn't do it anymore, I was done, broke up with him, what pissed me off the most about the situation was that, and 
this will bring back the point of the fucking bimbos at the beginning of the relationship only trying to break them up so that the bimbos can have the bloke. Listen to this. I was attacked by a lot of his fans because he made a couple of videos on his blog channel about... Okay, so this isn't the bit, but it is coming up. How I abandoned him and how I made him sad and how it was because we didn't spend enough time together and, like, that wasn't the reason. I mean... But what's funny on that, too, is that I usually end up losing lots of friends at the end of a relationship, too, because that shit gets fucking spread around uh, about me. And it's funny how the we broke up because the bitch was cheating on me, then I'm also the fucking asshole because I went and dumped her and all this kind of stuff, but never mind the fact that they've had a bloke for the last six fucking weeks. <laughs> you know, they've had the bloke for six fucking weeks. The bloke, like, we've fucking broken up. And they're sitting there having a big old cry that, oh, they left me alone, and oh, blah, 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 blah. And when it's actually fucking her, she's fucking fucked me off for some other fucking idiot. But with me second ex, it was really bloody funny because the bloke she left me for um, had been wanting her for over 20 years. Now, Naomi had her when she was getting off the, the, the fucking the speed and all that kind of shit, so she had a pretty good body on her back then. And I was and I was going out with her as she was starting to lose that body. Um, and she was eating proper, and because the drugs weren't speeding up her metabolism or anything like that, um, she was gaining lots of weight. And uh, she left me for this other fucking bloke when she was really fucking horrid. Oh, she definitely, in two years, she changed a hell of a lot. And, uh, you know... I did walk away from that situation thinking, mate, if, you, if that's what you've been fucking dying for, mate, you can fucking have it. <laughs> All the fucking luck to you, mate. Fucking Jesus. Yeah, because I know what you've just, you're just about to get. <laughs> you think you're fucking me over, mate? <laughs> nah, seriously. Fucking, she ended up ruining that cunt too. Or she ended up ruining that cunt. She didn't ruin me. I got out of there well before it. It was bit of a discussion about an inheritance that I had at the time, you know, is that how dare I decide to leave some money for a rainy day later on, why am I not spending it all on her, because it's my fucking money, and I'll make the fucking decision on what I'll do with it, um, but yeah, this, this other cunt, fucking, out of courier business, that one broke, fucking, she bled in fucking dry, and sure as shit, as soon as he said, fucking, we've got to do something about the money to stop spending all of it, and she goes, well, fuck off then, <laughs> discuss that because there were some issues there but like oh and not only that so he got her when she was big fat old and ugly um she ruined him like and he was he, he was forking out more bloody money than what he would have done and he fucking got a two dollar hook or a fucking bloody canterbury road or something like that so yeah fucking idiot like, that's not the reason we broke up we broke up because of other very serious issues uh, and then all these people came attacking me saying how I was horrible. And I understand because the content on my channel isn't always something that people view as a good thing. I do. And the people that were coming to attack it too, what's the bit? These are fucking idiot bloody bimbos who probably do know what this Tabasco's fuckwit is like, but are still fucking giving her shit because he's a poor little, you know, and all these dumb fucking bimbos are like, oh, he's the fully sickest. Oh, you can't tell me anything else. You know, fucking... <laughs> I feel like I'm doing good with the things that I say in my videos, but a lot of people don't, and they think that I'm a bad person for not being religious. And that. Oh, I was just going to say, no, you're a heathen fucking atheist, and that's why you're a bad person. But then again, I'm a heathen fucking atheist too. And I'm the bad person that saved eight people's lives in my time, so I don't know. That was another thing on fucking feminism, too. I saw a video last night of some fucking feminist giving some bloke shit about not being able to create life. Well, I'll put it to you that the light, eight lives that I've saved brought them back from the fucking dead, so I did, in fact, create eight more lives. They, were, they weren't supposed to live for the next day. I gave them that time. If it wasn't for me, they'd be fucking dead. So... Women can create life? Yeah, so fucking what? I can continue it or end it. Who's fucking God now? <laughs> and being outspoken about it and, and things that I say and my political views and they, they judge me for it. So not only do I have these young people thinking that I'm mean to him, they look at my channel and I'm like, oh yeah, this bitch, you know, of course, she's horrible. Uh, I can't believe she broke Toby's heart and I had to deal with this. And I actually got to a point where I had to make a video on my blog channel being like, stop. 
stop the little hate comments. Like, I was trying to move on, and, like, I just, I, I kept being flooded with these people telling me how horrible I was after I felt like I had just gone through hell. Um, now, if anybody does see this, and, like, I do end up getting in a relationship before I leave this country, which I'm not planning on doing, because um, what I'm going to be doing when I leave here is something you don't drag a family along to. Um, that's just stupid. But if, in fact, I do get into a relationship, I guarantee it'll only last two years, and there'll be certain plot points along that relationship that will play out just like the last lot. Um, and when it does end, remember... She's most likely fucked off and left me for somebody else. So if she gets on YouTube and starts going, oh, he's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. just remember this video, boys and girls. And it was very frustrating for me. Um, and then the girl that he was with in Canada ended up moving to LA, moving in with him, and they dated. The reason I bring this up is because I eventually came back into the picture. We started talking. It, it had been like four months. We decided to, to like put the past aside and like talk as friends. We considered dating again. He flew me to Mexico for my birthday. It was, you know, it was like one of the sweetest things anyone's ever done for me. And while we were there, he messaged, was messaging other girls, one of which was the one that he dated and told her of like that he loved her. And she posted about it. She tweeted about it. I think she Snapchatted about it. And her fans saw that. And then commented on one of my vlogs saying, hey, you know, you're in Mexico, and then this is what he's saying, and then that caused a fight. And there was this comment thread of people bringing this to light on my vlog, and April saw it. The girl who made the Tumblr post, she saw it. She commented on it. And she immediately wrote me and said, hey, sorry I commented publicly about Toby on your, your vlog channel, but uh, I just, you know, I had to. I can't hold it back anymore. He treated me like shit. Uh, he, you know, drugged me, and I have text proof because I made sure that I, I made sure to have him admit it in text messages and it just seemed very weird. Why didn't she go to the cops if, you know, she was drugged and all this kind of stuff? There's actual laws against that. Um, unwittingly drugging people and whatnot. Uh, n never mind the, n n the nefarious reasons. Even if you gave pot brownies to somebody as a bit of a joke, just to see him go a bit loopy. That's also illegal. Um, I'm pretty sure that's in every state in, the, in, in America. So if she was drugged, um, the, you, you won't get in trouble. If, you're, if you've are if you been affected by drugs, the cops don't give a fuck. If you're dealing them or you're fucking giving them to some cunt without their knowledge or fucking stuff like that, you've got a quantity on you, that's when they give a shit. But if you walk into a police station stoned off your ass to report something, they're not going to give a fuck that you're stoned, except for the fact that your altered perception might have skewered the, the statement a wee bit. But, yeah. So, you know, date rape drugs and shit like that. If you don't fucking remember a few hours of your night and all this and you've woken up in a funny position with things feeling a bit bloody weird and gooey, yeah, go to the cops. Tell them you got drugged, this, that, and the other thing. Blah, 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 blah. They're not going to do anything to you. They're going to do something to the cunt that did it to you. So, yeah. <coughs> so, personally, if this Sheila didn't go to the cops uh, about that, about him drugging her, you can probably fucking assume that that might be a bullshit story. That she came out of nowhere and just, like, loved what was going on. I mean, I, she, she, she reached out in an effort to help me, uh, in an effort to be there for me, to let me know that I wasn't alone, but I wasn't asking for that. I didn't want, you know, that's, like, one of my things. Like, that's, whenever I go through problems, I'm normally very quiet. I'm a very to-myself person. Whenever I was in Florida and I was going through my phase of, of feeling like my life is over whenever I was going through divorce and, and dropping out of med school and I, I just felt suicidal and I decided to instead of going the suicidal route to just move to California I didn't tell anybody I didn't tell my friends or my family or nothing I just left and moved to California everyone was left very confused but that's just how I am I internalize things and I process things in my own brain on my own time and I don't like people feeling sorry for me I hate that more than anything and that's why this video is actually quite critical. I'm not on her side. I'm not giving her sympathy. I do understand there's a few instances there that I have actually seen and been through myself and all this. But fucking, I'm also not sugarcoating any fucking thing either, am I? Fucking, you know, she did make a fuck up here and there by going back to this fucking idiot. Um, she made a fuck up by not listening to some of those people at the beginning who some of them obviously had an element of truth to what they were saying. 
and she did go out with this dumb fuck and all this kind of stuff, and then she got her ass bit. But at least she's smart enough to admit that she's got her ass bit. You know, it was partly her fault. It was not the guy's fault and everybody else's fault. Yeah, she fucked up a couple of times, okay? Yeah, good, right. Now, no sympathy, you've done that, let's move on. Uh, so, whenever I have, you know, things, I just kind of turn into a recluse. Like, I just hide. I'm very, I just go into my little hole, process things on my own. Um, so whenever I was going through all this stuff with him, I just, it was very difficult. I was dealing with a lot. I would, like, shut out friends, and um, people actually, some people publicly tried to make me feel bad about myself for not being able to hang out with them, and it was just, it was just stupid. Uh, but I was going through a very, very hard time. Uh, and I, I feel shitty making this video because I know that's what I'm going to get. I'm going to get people feeling sorry for me, trying to sympathize with me, trying to, you know, Naughty. make me feel better about myself. And I just, I don't, I just, it just feels so like. Care fact the fuck all, sweetheart, because I know you'll never fucking root me. Um, not only that, I know you'd be one of the people who'd now jump in the car with Ted Bundy to get away from me. Um, you're not going to give me the fucking benefit of the doubt, so why should I fucking sugarcoat things to fucking, you know, fucking make you feel happy? Uh, the only reason why I am doing this is because you brought up ports, uh, points that fucking confirm my points that I've made up in, in, in anecdotes before. And, uh, yeah, no fucking sympathy here. He's the smallest violin in the world playing just for you, Jacqueline. I don't like it. I'm just not that kind of person. Um, I don't like putting personal stuff like this out there. It's too personal. It's too much. Um, so whenever somebody does something like that with the intent of like putting all their stuff out there, it just feels like there maybe is something else going on. Uh, some other kind of reason. I know that April, you know, after this supposedly happened, she lived with him for a couple of months. And like, you know There you go. There's that fucking Sheila talking shit about the bloke. Apparently been drugged by this bloke, and <clears throat> he, you know, you couldn't, you weren't, weren't to touch him with a fifty foot barge pole. This fucking idiot ended up rooting the bloke after he, she's been drugged and <laughs> fucking stupid bimbos. But it goes back to my point that I made earlier on in the video that fucking a lot of these cunts are really saying shit just to break them up, and that's what fucking bitches do. That's another thing that, it, that shits me about fucking relationships. The he said, she said, cunts coming out of the woodwork, making shit up, causing drama, causing troubles. Like, the next person I get telling me, why can't you just be fucking happy for him? I'm just going to turn around and say, because no cunt's fucking happy for me when I fucking do it. Now get fucked. Yeah. You know, people talk and everything is rumor, but one thing that I heard forever ago was, because I, I helped him curb the drug problem. I helped that a lot. I... And you went out with a druggo. That should have been your first sign, honey. I tried to get rid of alcohol. I tried to get rid of drugs. I, I, I had a very good influence on him. A lot of people, you know, have come to me and told me, like, when you dated him, like, you helped a lot. Um, which is cool. Like, and it made me feel good about myself that I was able to, to have that kind of effect. But... One of the things that I heard, and one of the reasons why I didn't really like when he would hang out with April, was because I knew that she was one of the people that introduced him to Molly. She she told him about 5-HTP and how that helped her, because it made her depressed. Like, anyone that I talk to that, that knows the situation, you know, thinks that it's it's just her being sorry for the plane, that it's her being, you know, pulled into things by him, but I've heard the opposite in some situations. You know, there's two sides to every story, and, and I feel like people are only getting one. And I understand that he probably did treat her like shit. He probably did yell at her. He probably did make her cry. Uh, you know, he probably did, you know, lie to her about uh, his relationships with other people and, and did lie to her to keep her staying, you know, about uh, you know, going public eventually with their relationship and stuff. I believe all of that is true, but I do believe that there's a gray area. I don't know exactly what happened with the drug thing. I wasn't there. Uh, all I do know is that she was not... Uh, a person who wouldn't take that drug. Um, I, but like I said, like I hate this, and I feel like I'm in such a tough place because I, I don't want to help create an environment where, where women are afraid to come out about stuff like this because they're not going to be believed and they're going to you know, be, oh, you're just doing it for attention. And, and like, you know, like a lot of girls who come out with stuff like this aren't doing it for those reasons. And I'm 
But what doesn't help the matter is that fucking a lot of bimbos, when they do get assaulted or something like that, don't go to the police straight away. They seem to think that it's like a car accident. You can report it within the next few days. Um, they go home, they have showers, or they wait for the drugs to get out of the system, or fucking other stupid things like that that make law enforcement's life ridiculously hard to prove anything. Now, had this fucking idiot who claimed that she'd been spiked had gone to the cops and said that, there would have been an official fucking thing there to, to say, right, well, ring ring this lot and fucking, or Freedom of Information Act, get this, or here's a copy of my fucking statement, something like that, but no. So that's where I was sort of leaning into it being a bull, bit of a bullshit story. And then, as she just mentioned, um, she ended up fucking this bloke. And also stated that she doesn't, that, that Jacqueline doesn't think that this person would not use the same sort of substances as this bloke was doing. So the the whole warning off of Jacqueline was a bullshit story. So this other fucking bitch could just take the bloke off him. And it's a kind of a thing where like, you know, well, if you want this fucking arsehole, fucking go for it. But just don't expect any cunt to cry off you when he, when he kicks your head in. You know, kind of thing. And then there was the the he said she said like yeah you know he's got he's got his side saying that she was the bitch, and then they've got her side saying that she was manipulated into it. Oh fuck off, fuck off, manipulated my ass after she's gone and fucking warned Jacqueline off and all this you know saying how much of an asshole and all this. The last thing you'd want to do is go back to talking with him, and if you do. Go back to the person in a fucking abusive and and, and and aggressive relationship. It's on your fucking head. It's your own fucking fault. That's the point where I just go, right, you deserve everything you fucking get from now on. Reminds me of this old fucking thing in Army Padre. The Padre fucking used to fucking come and tell us. It was uh, um, this bloke. He's out in the country. He's in his country, Australia, and there's a flood coming. And um, the floods get about waist high, and a bloke comes past on a horse and says, mate, you want me to give you a lift out? And the bloke says, no, nah, I've prayed to God. God will save me. Um, then it gets up to uh, just the, the, the gutter and the roof of his house. So he's now sitting on top of his house, and he's, a bloke comes past on a boat. He goes, mate, you want you want a fucking uh, you want a lift? And he's, no, no, it's all right. I've prayed to God, and he'll help me. Fucking... Um, Water's getting up, and he's now standing on the peak of the roof, and that's about all that's dry land that's around anymore, and the bloody helicopter, or a whacka whacker bird, as the bloke used to fucking call it, the helicopter comes past, and they've got on the speaker and said, mate, you want us to fucking pick you up and drop you off somewhere? And he goes, no, it's all right. God's, I've prayed to God. He'll fucking save me. So they go, fuck with. Anyway, fucking, uh, so the water kept rising, he gets swept off the roof and drowns and gets up to the pearly gates and you know, goes up, sees God and says, I prayed to you and you didn't save me. And God says, what the fuck do you think the cunt and the horse, the bloke and the boat and the fucking helicopter was for, you stupid bastard? <laughs> you know, and the helicopter was the point where God even went, you deserve everything you fucking get from now on, mate, I'm fucking had enough. So, some social commentary on some social issues that people are generally too fucking stupid to bloody realise. The ones that aren't too stupid to realise are using it to their own advantages, and this is the reason why feminists are fucking laughed at, because they seem to think that fucking women should be treated with without kids' gloves, they should be allowed to not be told by men what's going on and all this kind of stuff, and then this shit happens. And dumb bitches actually do need to be told. They do, in fact. And it's not just dumb bitches, too. It's like there's fucking blokes. It's... Oh, shit. There is only a small handful of people that I really can't tell what to do because they do, in fact, know more than me. And unfortunately, none of them live near me at the moment. So pretty much there's the largest majority of people around this area do, in fact, need to be told. They need to be told everything from... Not to walk on the road, to look both ways when they're crossing the road, to 
how to orientate themselves on a toilet seat to use it properly. No fucking kidding. How to fucking drive. Like, cunts need to be fucking told. And even to get out of the bloody road. You know? So, yeah, your feminist fuckwits are wrong. Everybody else, take the points out of this fucking video. And, uh, yeah, keep your eyes open because you'll see that I'm right. Anyway, boys and girls, I think 50 minutes is enough for that. Booty.